It's the Agribusiness Report. I'm Tony St. James. We're joined today by the Honorable Jim Costa, who represents the 21st District of California. He's a member of the House Ag Committee and a farmer. Welcome back to the show. Well, thank you very much, Tony. It's great to be uh, back on uh, agribusiness, uh, and it's... Uh, you know, uh, America's agriculture is, uh, I think, uh, too often taken for granted. Uh, third generation farmers, you noted. And the fact is, is uh, food is a national security issue. It, uh, and uh, people take it for granted because about 4% of America's population is directly involved in the production of food and fiber. <clears throat> and uh, people go to a grocery store and they see all the food they could possibly want or need and they go to their favorite fast food place or restaurant and they don't seem to have a problem there either, although in the supply chain issues with the middle of the pandemic we had some short shortages of shelves. But uh, uh, basically Americans, the majority of Americans, I don't think have a, a real good understanding of where their food comes from. We did see that become a little more prominent during the pandemic and the, uh, the correlation, if you will, with supply chain uh, challenges. I'm looking for the right sure. words here. Uh, have we have we come across that that bridge of supply chain concerns, or are we still dealing with some of them? Well, I think we're still dealing with some of them. I mean, certain um, commodities, uh, you know, uh, in the supermarket, uh, you know, whether it be fruits and vegetables or some of the meat products or, you know, flour, uh, because of the inflationary pressures plus uh, supply chain challenges have increased. Uh, but now some of them are starting to go down, of course. With eggs, the avian flu was a big factor, uh, but uh, so um, the, the thing is, is that uh, uh, we had some real dislocations when we closed restaurants and when we closed schools. Uh, I didn't realize, for example, that 70% uh, uh, of Americans um, uh, eat their bacon and pork bellies in restaurants. <laughs> So you close restaurants and, you know, I mean, I mean, you think people eat bacon at home, but it's a small percentage of the overall, and everybody, a lot of folks like their bacon, but the, the fact is, is that we've had dislocation in prices at, at the grocery store, and, and we've seen an increase in, in the menus of our favorite restaurants uh, it affected that way. But uh, I think we're getting through it. I think uh, markets are beginning to settle down and normalize. And uh, obviously, it's critical that we provide healthy, nutritious food on America's dinner table every night. And that is something that kind of works us into talking about the Farm Bill. Uh, you'll be writing another Farm right. Bill. I'm, I'm trying to count. Is this fourth? fourth? Yes. Yeah. Fourth Farm Bill. Uh, as you look at that, what are the priorities for Mr. Costa? Well, uh, I look at the Farm Bill as uh, America's safety net for agriculture, uh, for farmers, ranchers, dairy men and women uh, throughout the country. The nutrition programs, which are critical, uh, are also a safety net. And uh, we've been able to maintain for decades bipartisan support for the Farm Bill because we combine in the 12 titles of the Farm Bill not only uh, programs for various uh, commodities throughout the country, uh, and as we know in some regions certain commodities are, are bigger than others in different regions uh, of America. Uh, for example, in the Midwest, uh, corn and soybeans and uh, um, pork and, and other things are, are among the largest producers. Uh, in California, a state that I represent, uh, fruits and vegetables and, and citrus and dairy. And, well, in California, we grow almost everything, over 300 commodities. And so um, there are 
different regions that are impacted by the Farm Bill in terms of the 12 titles uh, more than other areas. And so uh, trying to strike that balance. And of course the nutritional needs are across the country. We have a lot of hardworking people who are uh, you know, in, in jobs that uh, with a family of four or five, they're not able to put enough food on the dinner table. So the SNAP program and uh, programs for women, infants, and children are critical. Uh, our school lunch and breakfast programs uh, for a lot of kids, that's the best meal they get in the day. So, uh, but keeping the package together for nutrition and for the, the commodity uh, titles, uh, I think, have been the, uh, the basis for the bipartisan support, and obviously we need to maintain that as we negotiate the Farm Bill this year. You mentioned some of the, the commodities that are grown in California still grow cotton as well. Port of Long Beach is the number one export uh, port for U.S. cotton and there have been some, some challenges with the West Coast ports. Uh, where, would you, where would you put uh, that situation here today? Well, uh, we are in the process of the reauthorization of the contracts uh, with the uh, uh, longshoremen on the West Coast ports, Long Beach, uh, Los Angeles, Oakland, Seattle, Portland. And so we've seen some work slowdowns uh, take place here in recent months. Uh, but there's many factors to that supply chain. Uh, during the pandemic, we had uh, a host of um, container ships coming in and leaving empty. And that was an unfair trade practice. As a result of that, we passed the Ocean Shipping Bill, myself and John Garamini and others, uh, Dusty Johnson. Uh, that uh, really gave the Federal Maritime Commission some ability to um, have some authority to restrict uh, these ships coming in, bringing in their products, and then leaving empty. Um, I mean, 44 percent of California's agriculture is exported, and we have markets in the Asia and elsewhere. Uh, but if you couldn't get a consignment on a ship, you're really out of luck. And so uh, that was very helpful. I'm looking at following up this year with legislation that would make the 10 major uh, you know, shipping companies in the world that control basically 90% of the shipping uh, subject to antitrust laws because, well, the legislation that the President signed last year I think has been helpful to the Federal Maritime Commission on demerge issues and on, on delays. I think we need to have some additional tools for the Federal Maritime Commission to uh, let these, um, you know, fed these maritime uh, companies know that they've got to be fair. Uh, I mean, we both, I believe in free trade, but I also believe in a level playing field. And uh, the pandemic turned a lot of that upside down. In addition, um, the uh, our ports and harbors don't have the level of efficiency and modernization that other ports and harbors have around the world. As a matter of fact, in many uh, instances, we rank uh, below worldwide uh, efficiency standards for uh, the, the changes that occurred. And so the $1.2 trillion bipartisan infrastructure package has about $19 billion set aside for modernization of our ports and harbors. So, you know, you put all these things together in terms of our supply chain. You know, one, we've got to you know, renegotiate this uh, contract with the longshoremen. Two, we've got to uh, ensure that these uh, old international companies uh, play fairly and, and that uh, we're able to get, uh, uh, when these ships offload their cargo, that they go back with American products in them uh, back to uh, our, our markets. Uh, and that three, we do our, our part to modernize our ports to make them more efficient uh, because they, uh, uh, we export a, a lot of products in agriculture around the world and uh, we can compete with anybody if we can get our products to those markets. So good to see you. Thanks for your you. time. Thanks for your insight. Yeah. And good luck on writing this farm bill and the rest of the session.
Well, I appreciate that, Tony. I appreciate your efforts over the years to inform, uh, you know, the heartland uh, how important it is uh, that uh, we maintain strong bipartisan support for American agriculture because food is a national security issue and it's a global security issue. I mean, we've seen uh, impacts to our markets with Russia's invasion of Ukraine and uh, the ripple effect that that has had uh, for uh, markets that Ukraine provided and, uh, you know, uh, Russia's horrific invasion uh, that uh, obviously the brave Ukrainian people standing up for democracy and, and their sovereignty in their own country, but for democracies around the world. And when we see President Putin weaponizing food and weapon, weaponizing fuel, we've seen that in increase in fertilizer costs here at home. Uh, we know that uh, this, it's critical that we defeat the Russians and that we stand by Ukraine's effort to maintain their democracy and their sovereignty. So good to see you. Good we'll see, see you up. again next time. Yeah, absolutely. He represents the 21st Congressional District of California, member of the House Ag Committee, the Honorable Jim Costa. Thank you. And this is the Agribusiness Report.